Hey friends, thank you so much for joining for another amazing episode. But before we get started, I have a quick announcement and I'm going to make it quick, I promise. Now, remember we're talking about the contest. It starts this week for 10 weeks leading up to my 100th episode. Also, we're looking for 10,000 downloads and not to mention the Olympics is right at the end of our contest. So here's the thing. This is how you can win on a weekly basis. What I'm asking is everybody to go subscribe, give us a five star, give us a review, uh, screenshot me and tag me on Instagram at sylviedeu underscore cyclist and you will go in to win that week. I will be going on live, well, I'll be making the announcement Friday on my coaching episode as to who wins the prize. So please share this with your friends, go in and put a great comment and put your notifications on. You don't want to miss out your opportunity to win. And I'm going to have an overall prize for everybody who subscribes from now until the end of the contest. Thanks a lot, guys. And I so appreciate you. Have an amazing day and enjoy the episode. Welcome everyone to another amazing episode of Secrets from the Saddle, All Things Cycling Podcast with your host Sylvie Dow. And it's Friday and this is the Coach's Corner. But before I get started, I just want to share with you how exciting I am for the next 10 weeks. We're going to be doing our contest on our podcast. So that means if you get, if you go to iTunes and place a review and five stars, you're going to be in the running. So every Friday I will be drawing a prize on this episode and we'll be reaching out to you. So please make sure to also a screenshot, share on social media, tag me, put your social media handle in there so I can find you. And um, here's a couple of things that I decided. So for every review, I'm going to be giving $1 to a local charity. And I chose the SPCA because I absolutely love animals and all of our cats have come from the SPCA as adoptees. So $1 will for every review is going to go. So I'm hoping to get a couple hundred. So I need your help. So please share and you could go in for the running and whoever does had a review, I'm going to do a grand prize at the end. And, um, I just love uh, rewarding people who help um, because just really want to get my podcast out there and share it with as many humans as possible um, who love cycling. You don't even have to love cycling to enjoy some of these stories. So, you know, if this is the first time you listen to this, go back and check a couple out because we've got all types of people and I have so many cool episodes coming down. So, but today we're going to talk about helmets. Who's excited about that? So this is something you might want to check out the um, YouTube video on this because it's going to be a real big visual. I do have some stats and we're going to talk about some things, but I also have a bunch of helmets here that I've had around the house and um, I'm going to show you how to wear a helmet, um, what to do. So I'm going to do my best to verbally um, explain how to make some adjustments. So types of helmets, we're going to talk about, um, well, actually first, I'm just going to sh like, yeah, types of helmets. Well, there's a bunch on the market. And for me, this is my opinion. Um, and I'm going to be throwing some, some stuff at you. Like there's going to be a lot of data here, but most of all, I just want you to if you're a cyclist, you should have a helmet, first of all, and you should be wearing it every time you get on your bike, number two. Why? Because things happen all the time. It doesn't, doesn't take much for you to go over your handlebars and land on your face or your head. It really doesn't. I can tell you, I can talk, I can share with you some crazy, stupid things that I've done where I've landed on my head. And um, so the thing is that when you're cycling, you should always be protecting your head. Um, if you're a parent, listen to this and you have kids and they're wearing helmets and you aren't, 
shame on you because you should be a great role model. Your kids are going to look looking up to you go, well, uh, if you're not wearing a helmet, why should I wear a helmet? Which is a valid reason, right? Um, so just put your helmet on because like I said, it you don't have to be going very fast to fall. Um, you could hit a curb, a pothole, somebody could run out in front of you, uh, somebody could run into you, and you don't want to end up with a concussion. I mean, I have fallen, I have crashed, and for the love of God or the universe, I have never had a concussion bad enough that's brought me down for weeks or ever. So I am, um, and I've fallen hard. I have like scars to, to prove it. So that's the number one thing. If you ride your bike, let me, and all here's the other thing. It's super cool to have a helmet. Get yourself a cool helmet. So it feels cool. Um, now, so a Tysa helmet. So I'm going to talk about old to new. And um, here's, here's an old one. Okay. So if anybody has one that looks like this, so visual here, it's basically one that's white foam or blue foam. It looks like a bucket. And I see a lot of people wearing them. I don't know where they get them from their, their garage. Maybe you picked it up at a, um, um, a garage sale. Um, but here's the way to know if your helmet is too old. Inside of every helmet, there should be a sticker, there should still be a sticker, that indicates the age or when it was produced. So this one here is 2010. Now, if you have a helmet, the recommended age of a helmet is five years. After five years, you change it up. Okay, so is this one too old or not? It's like 11 years old. So this one is not worthy of being used. However, I keep this around for just in case um, for a short bike ride to to swim, which is like less than a kilometer away. At least your helmet is uh, your helmet. Your head is protected. Um, however, I would never wear this on a long ride ever. Um, and then so I have 2010, I have 2014, this is another old one. I have 2000, this is my current one, current helmet, and this is 2017. So this is as gorgeous as it is, as much as I love it. It's got one more year and then I have to replace it, which I do have a replacement, but this one's 2018. So it has two years on it. Um, and... You know, so it's important to take a look at the age of your helmet. And if it's over five, do yourself a favor and go shopping. Now, one thing that bikes, bike shops usually have a lot of are helmets. And here's a price point. I wouldn't pay over a hundred bucks for a helmet. Okay. Um, because I don't personally believe that price indicates how, how effective it is. I just say, get a, get a bucket on your head, right? Get, get a helmet on your head um, so that you're protected. So I would, I would usually pay 80 bucks for a helmet. So anywhere between 50 and 100 is a good price for covering your head because it's like, if you don't have this, you know how debilitating it can be if you've ever had a concussion. So put, put a little bit of, thought and money into that. Now, recently, there has been some talk about MIPS. So it's multiple impact protection. I believe that's what it stands for. Now, I personally, these two helmets over here, the new and the Brico, they do not have it in here. They do not have MIPS inside their helmets. I was given these because I'm I'm an ambassador for the, the company, and I've also talked to them about putting some sort of um, caging inside the helmet. Now, MIPS is one. If you look at this, the old laser, these old laser and old specialized, they have the they have a cage inside of the helmet. It's not MIPS. This is way before those were 
these those have been com coming out recently. But this is what I really prefer is having something like this, like a cage around a head so that your helmet is not directly on your head. It's kind of like sitting on your head. It's like a construction helmet. Um, and I think, I believe that that is a better model. And you can get ones like this with this cage um, for a really reasonable price. Now, so that's your homework to go shopping. Now, here's a couple things to think when you're wearing your helmet, okay? So wearing your helmet, I'm just going to, so I got my helmet on my head here. Oh, jeez. And, okay, this is what I see. So I teach Learn to Group Ride clinics. I've been teaching them for 13 years. And so one of the first things that I do is I go and I take a look at everybody who is participating, what their helmet looks like and their age of their helmet. That's basically the first conversation. How old is your helmet? Because you can pretty much eyeball to see, like, how old somebody's helmet is. Um, and then the other one is how it's sitting on your head. And I find that if you don't really know, it's usually sitting way back and your forehead is completely exposed and it's hanging off the back of your head. Have you ever seen someone riding down the road with the helmet like privily like catching all the air? <laughs> okay, so first of all, that's not going to do anything for your forehead, nose or teeth. The way you want to wear your helmet is you're going to bring it way forward on your forehead so it is sitting above your eyebrows, okay? So your eyebrows are not have not disappeared, but your helmet is sitting right above your eyebrows and literally your glasses will be right underneath your helmet, okay? So that's right, like shift it forward, right? So if you were to hit this helmet, you know, I would save my forehead, my nose, and my teeth. That's number one. Number two, so number one is shifting that helmet forward. Number two is making sure your helmet is big enough or not too big for your head. So you put it on, don't clip it on, and then uh, twist your head side to side a little bit. If it moves, it's too big. If you can fit lots of fingers up the side, it's too big. Give it back to your dad or your older brother or the friend who gave it to you and say like, thanks, but this helmet is too big. Now, another thing you can do is if you go to the back, there should be a little tightening screw and that will bring the, that will tighten the helmet to your head. Now, again, if it's something like this laser, which is a large and your head is a small, it's not going to make it fit any better. Um, and therefore, and you know, you don't want the helmet pressing too much on your forehead because that both leaves a, a, a dent, like for me, the dent lasts like all day, or you could get your, give yourself a headache. Okay, so just make sure that your helmet is not wobbling, it fits well, it's down over your eyebrows, and the back is tightened. Now, another thing is, is the straps. I see these straps, they're always like... For somebody who's new, doesn't really know, and it's no excuse of yours or, you know, it's not your fault, but like the, the straps are hanging way low. They go over your, like when you clip them in, they go over your chin and, um, and it's just, it's not going to keep your helmet on your head. So first you clip on and you tighten your helmet. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there. You tighten your helmet. Okay, so you tighten it so it is tight underneath your chin. It's not cutting, it's not gonna choke you or anything. So make sure that's number one. Number two is you're gonna wanna tighten these little um, clips so they're not hanging down near your, your chin, your jawline. They, you push them up and so they're underneath your earlobe, okay? So both sides, move them up so they're underneath your earlobe. You might have to take your helmet off and adjust the straps so that one is not, the back isn't longer than the forward or the front or, but sometimes making those adjustments will have them fit nice and snug underneath your earlobe. 
Okay. And then if you're lucky, you get a specialized helmet that actually, you know, there's connectors right placed perfectly for you. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, so there's that. So that's putting your helmet on. Now, we talked about MIPS, how to wear your helmet, age is five years old. Now, you know, some of the things to think about, um, and we mentioned like, uh, you know, things that age your helmet are thing, you know, like sweat, dropping your helmet multiple times over five years, right? It falls out of the car, out of your bag. Somebody throws it at you and it drops. I wouldn't go get another helmet just because of that. But if you do crash, don't even think twice. Just go get another helmet. Um, now, other things are like sun, wind, cold, if it stays in your garage all winter long, um, you know, the, the sweat, did I say sweat, like oils from your hair, things like that um, break down over time, especially the meshing. All right, here's some stats for you. Or actually, here's five top reasons <laughs> that I found um, to wear a helmet. All right, number one, it makes you look cooler. Like if you're not wearing a helmet, you're not cool. So just wear a helmet. I don't care how gorgeous your hair is. Your hair looks awesome underneath your helmet. So make sure you're wearing your helmet. Um, you recently cannot ride with others without your helmet. That's number two. So if you're going to go for a group ride, right? You forget your helmet. Fuck, that sucks. Um, then it makes you more visible. So... Like, I like to go for visibility in my helmet, so pricing, then visibility, and fit. Um, but it's all very individual for you. I just like the, the brighter, the better. Like, give me the bright orange. And then number four, 88% of cycling brain injuries could be avoided. That's a pretty big number. So think about that when you decide to go for your ride to the corner store and you don't decide to, you know, put your helmet on, like you'd have no idea what could happen, right? Um, number one, 900, so this is taken in the States, 900 people die each year in bicycle accidents, 75% of them from head injuries, 70%, okay? So let that just sink in. So those are five reasons why you should be wearing a helmet. Now here's some more data before we get done. So this is 2017 data from the States. And I was just like, whoa. And I couldn't find anything, I'm sure there's something uh, uh, earlier, more recent. So 53 cyclists, 14 and under were killed uh, in 2017. I'm sure that must be higher. But anyways, average age of a bicyclist killed on US roads was 47 years old. Mm, that's a little bit younger than me. Um, males were 87% killed. So <laughs> men, what are you doing? 75% um, of fatal crashes were urban. So like I said, going to the corner store, somebody didn't see when they're turning, um, or maybe you didn't stop at a stop sign. Like crazy shit can happen. Um, so 81.5% of cyclists were hit from the front of the car. So that's like no signaling, um, doing one of those zigzags, or maybe the, the uh, motorist wasn't paying attention and you weren't wearing something really bright or had a light on. 63% um, were on r roadways, not at intersections. 75, 27% uh, were at intersections. Oh. Uh, 10% were in other locations. Um, fatalities were daylight, 48%, dark, 47%, dusk, 3%, and dawn, 2%. Uh, fatalities were often occurred between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m., which is really interesting. So it's like the, the time change, like people going back from work, uh, regardless of the season. And this one, it was 
the the one that really stuck with me. This is the last one is 17% of cyclists killed in 2017 had been drinking. 27%. Blood alcohol over 0 0.01. 37% of the crashes involved either a driver or a cyclist drinking. Wow. Okay. Guys. What's going on? Okay, so, I mean, that's some really interesting stats. And um, so regardless of your age, you got kids, they wear helmets, you should wear helmets. If you want a group ride, you should wear, be wearing a helmet. If you want to go to the store, buy a group helmet, like, just wear a helmet. And, you know, like, I know people, like, you know, they're like, why do I have to wear a helmet? I go, well, because you never know. And you don't want that never know to be to turn into something long term, like, you know, being paralyzed or, uh, you know, having brain injury or, you know, a constant cut. Like, do you want that for the rest of your life? Is it worth not putting a helmet on or is it worth putting a helmet on regardless? So just think it's all about mindset, guys. You are cool wearing your helmet and that's it. like I will always wear my helmet I love this helmet I'm sad that it's going to be old because I love this color and I was looking for another one this color that had the internal cage and I thought I'd found one for like 60 bucks and I was so excited but anyways boys and girls ladies and everybody it is so important to protect yourself with that have an amazing day and go rock your weekend. And don't forget, you can be part of the podcast challenge right now by going to iTunes and placing your review. You know, give me an honest, honest thought. What was your biggest takeaway? Do you like wearing your helmet? What is your favorite helmet? I'd love to know. And if you have something as bright as this, I want to see it. So make sure you send me or take a picture of yourself and tag me because you heard this podcast because I would absolutely love to see the other models out there that are super bright like this one, bright orange. Um, and screenshot this, tag me on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram. And with that, and then you can be part of the challenge for next week's startings. So with that, be safe.